Hi, welcome to We Create. Um, so let's talk cocoa bombs. I've seen these literally everywhere, online, in stores, like to buy all over YouTube for videos. And I've been thinking about making them since last year because I saw them last year. Um, they weren't as big last year, but I did see a few and I was like, oh, I want to make those. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll make them for a video. Like it'll be super fun. Like they look pretty easy in the videos. <sighs> Let me tell you, they are not as easy as they look. Um, I will show you in the video kind of how I finally got it. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk about like some of the challenges with them. Like, is it really worth it? Like, are they that great? That kind of thing. Um, I will say overall they were super fun. I made them with my sister. Um, and I had my nephew in the background. I'll tell you that in there too because you might hear him like squeal and stuff like that. But, um, basically, so for the cocoa bombs, I will show you all the ingredients that you need, the tools that I used, um, and all that kind of stuff, and you talk about flavoring and that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's just play the video of what I have, of how I made it, kind of through those steps, and then after that we will talk a little bit about the experience, how I actually felt about it, and all that good stuff. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to pour the chocolate into a microwave safe bowl. This is what I have. Then I'm going to put it in the microwave. I have my assistant open the microwave, which is my sister because this is a family activity. So you should be doing it with me. Okay, so when you microwave it, you have to put like 30 secret increments and then you have to stir. So that's what we're going to do. So this is for the second time around. It's almost ready, I think. Okay. So I think our chocolate's ready. We're going to use one of these brushes, little barbecue brushes, to brush the inside of the mold. that works we'll see I'm gonna do the other molds and then I'm gonna stick it in the freezer for like 10 minutes and then we'll see if we can pop them out okay so this is what they look like a little rough looking so now we're gonna try to pop them out I guess we'll see how that goes I feel like that's not gonna be as easy but hopefully since this is the right kind of mold it'll just kind of tip out Oh, oh, okay. It's coming out. Oh, it worked. There we go. We got one half. Okay, we're going to do the other half. Hopefully. Let's try this one. The other ones look like they want to crack. The best thing is, like, if they do crack, I'm just going to melt them again and keep doing it until it works. So that's kind of the best part about this. This one came out good too. Look at that. Got two halves. They're not like perfect, perfect, but it's a cylinder. It's gonna be a bomb. Okay, so now to kind of get them to, we're gonna fill them with some of our um, fillings, so whatever we wanna put in it. I'm gonna pop them back in the freezer for a little bit longer now that I pop them out, just so they don't, they do get melted when you start using your hands a lot, so. Fill that side with cocoa, then marshmallows. And a couple candy pieces. And I know it's small, these molds are small, but we also have to lightly melt the outer um, side of it on the frying pan so that will be even and then you'll just like kind of pop and stick on there perfect and then we're gonna put it back in the freezer okay and here is our finished cocoa bomb one of them I did a little bit of white chocolate drizzle on top and then now we're just gonna put it in this little clear cup here and now we're just gonna pour some hot milk over the top of our bomb. Oh, yep. Okay, you can kind of already see like the marshmallows come out. 
I can see the candy. There's our hot cocoa bomb. You might have to use two if you want it really chocolatey and cocoa-y because these ones were so small, but there you go. Okay, cocoa bombs. I have them here. I kind of had the final shot, but they are here. I made more. I made some white chocolate ones too at the end, covered them in sprinkles and stuff, and um, I did try drinking one after. It was actually really good. I, you do need, if you're using like a bigger mug, you definitely need to use two of those bombs. Um, because of the size of the mold that I had to get. So that's what we'll start with um, talking about making them. So essentially getting all the ingredients for it wasn't very expensive, like the cocoa and like sprinkles and stuff. I think I spent maybe $5 just on ingredients because you can get the little cocoa packets. So those go a long way. You can buy like one packet for a dollar um, kind of thing. And the sprinkles are about a buck and whatever else you want to put in it. It depends how fancy you want to make it. And then the chocolate chips are like a couple of dollars. So getting those are not very expensive at all. So that's good. The challenging part was the mold. Um, the mold that I had in the video is actually for ice cubes um, to make like round little ice cube things. I am thankfully my boyfriend borrowed it for me because what I did is I ordered the molds online because I couldn't find them in stores. And I was like, oh, I'll just order them online me forgetting it's Christmas time, holiday time. I'm not getting anything on time for delivery. What was I thinking? I did all my like holiday shopping earlier and I should have known. So that was partly my fault. I was like, oh, I don't have the molds for it. Uh, thankfully he had one of those molds and I've seen people use them online and I was like, okay, this will work, but they are smaller. So that was the challenging part is that I think it's because those molds were a little bit smaller. Um, you have to add like more chocolate. So you have to make a thicker layer of chocolate and then it comes out easier. There's that aspect. The other thing I struggled with was getting them to put together. So, you know, we I showed you the frying pan where we kind of melted it on the frying pan and kind of stuck them together and that does work and that's pretty simple. But I will say if you're working with small children, like adding any kind of heating thing is always kind of risky. So definitely parents are gonna have to do that. It is an extra step and I feel like that's why I was like, Oh my gosh, like one more thing to kind of stick them together. And also you kind of have to doctor it, like keep around the melted chocolate. Don't throw any of it away or make some extra because you'll want to use it to fill in holes if you see any, um, or if it's just not sticking enough and using a bunch of it will eventually get it to stick together and close. So, and then also if you want to do like little decorations on top, kind of like I did with my chocolate ones there, um, that always just looks pretty or you can put some on top and then sprinkles on it and those will stick better. So yeah, that's another pro tip. Just leave around some melted chocolate in case something messes up or you need to fill in holes, that kind of thing. And then the other thing is looking online, a lot of them don't tell you like accurate freezer times. Put them in there as long as possible. Like these guys that I had, I actually left these out overnight um, before I unmolded them and put them together this morning. And that worked so much better, which almost feels like it's not worth it because that's a long time waiting overnight. But I was doing like 15, 20 minutes leaving it in there. And like the chocolate was, it was still, it was frozen, but it was just very fragile and hard to work with. But this morning, like they popped right out of the molds. I put them on together. I didn't have any holes or breakage. So I think it's worth leaving them in the freezer as long as possible. And so the other thing is I got little gift baggies to put them in. So like if you wanted to give gifts to people and that kind of stuff. The only problem with that is, is that this chocolate, even though it's tempered and it won't melt right away, unless you're giving it to someone like, and then they're going to directly use it, it's going to melt. It's not going to last very long. So if this is what you're thinking for gifts and stuff, it might be too late now because I think this video is going up on Wednesday. So the day before Christmas Eve. Um, just know that maybe it's not the best gift thing for it. Um, I will say overall I had a lot of fun with it because it was, I did it with my sister and my nephews in the background. It's definitely like a family activity. It was still fun to do it. I just think like practicality, I was a little bit like, I don't know if they're worth it, but they do come out really pretty. And then watching them get melted in the cup is super fun and pretty. I would just be more like maybe not like a, make a bunch of these expecting to give them away as gifts. I don't think that's super realistic, but I think if you're just gonna do it at home with your family, with your kids, I think that's super fun. So definitely check it out. Um, I will have uh, pictures of the ingredients on listed. Like I said, those are pretty cheap and easy. If you can find the silicone molds, 
go for those ones. Um, if you can't, the ice cube ones will work in a pinch, just know they're smaller. And you're going to want to use a couple of those if you're going to do like a portion of cocoa to make it like actually super cocoa-y. Um, but they do taste good overall and they were pretty fun to make and I think they turn out really pretty. So I will say I'm biased on that, but I think they look pretty and fun. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me for this week, Great, And I hope to see you guys next time.